God bless you all this morning. Let's all stand and we'll open our service in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we've gathered together this morning, Lord, just eagles around your carcass, Lord, that we would be able to feast on your word, Lord. We just ask this morning, Lord, that you would help us just to put ourselves aside. Lord, be with Brother Brian as he comes this morning. Lord, be with those that are traveling, Lord. May you give them traveling mercies and those that are not able to make it this morning may you just be their portion lord for this song service this morning lord may we just truly worship you in spirit and truth lord knowing that we love you with all our hearts may you just accept it in jesus christ's name amen you can be seated there should be an old believe book in your seat there and if you want to turn to 593 <clears throat> we'll sing give thanks with a grateful heart Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. To the Holy One give thanks Because He's given Jesus Christ His Son And now let the weak say I am strong Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks, give thanks. Number 552. <clears throat> We'll start with, we'll start with, oh, magnify the Lord, and then go to the chorus. <clears throat> oh, magnify the Lord with me, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, for he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Glory, glory to his name, for it lives and reigns forevermore. Glory, glory to his name. He lives and reigns forevermore. 
Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Jehovah Jireh is his name, for he provideth all my needs. Jehovah Jireh is his name, for he provideth all my needs. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Amen. I truly pray he is your rock this morning. It's good to see you all in the house of the Lord. At this time, we'll take our prayer requests to the Lord this morning. I didn't have any written down or handed to me this morning, but if you'd like to make one known, you can do so at this time. Praise the Lord. I think everybody that caught a little bit of a cold is doing pretty good. It's good to see Brother Steve here. He looks like he's feeling better. Also, good to have our guest with us this morning. God bless you this morning. I hope our worship and our service is beneficial. All those unspoken requests this morning can be known by an uplifted hand. Brother Gary, would you come and take these unspoken requests to the Lord this morning? Our gracious Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning, Lord God. Lord, you've created a beautiful day, and we're so grateful for it, Lord, and we're thankful for every soul that is here this morning, Lord. We've come hungry, Lord God. We're, we're here to hear your word this morning. We see the hour is late, Lord, and we know, Lord God, that it won't be long before we'll be changed, Lord, and we'll be raptured, and we'll be with you at that wedding supper, Lord. But, Lord, we, we're here this morning to prepare for that hour. We ask, Lord God, that you would bless everyone that's here this morning, and may they receive what they came for, Lord. Lord, we ask now, Lord, that you would be mindful of every need, Lord, every hand that was raised. Father, we pray that you would meet those needs according to your perfect will, Lord God. We ask, Lord, that you'd be with those on the hookup this morning, Lord, our brothers and sisters around this world or wherever they might be. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would meet their needs also. We commit this service now into your hands. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hungry and thirsty. <clears throat> the voice of God had a, uh, a clip from that tape this morning. And the first uh, quote that Brother Branham made when he started the service was uh, he gave a definition from Webster's on thirst. On thirst. And it, the definition he pulled up was a painful desire, a need. Is that what we have this morning? He's here to meet our needs, amen. Let's uh, sing number uh, 316, <clears throat> Sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Tried and true With thanksgiving I'll be a living Sanctuary For you Lord, prepare be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. For you. With thanksgiving, I will be a living 
sanctuary for you. Amen. Isn't that kind of dying to yourself? If you're dead to yourself, he can sure live for it through you. God bless you this morning. Brother Steve, Brother John, if you would come this morning, we'll do our tithing and offering at this time. Brother John, would you ask the Lord's blessing on the offering this morning? As they're taking that up, we'll sing, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. In what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Amen. At this time, we'll change the order of the service. Let us stand. We'll sing only believe as we ask Brother Brian to come. Only believe, only believe, only believe, all things are possible. Only believe, Jesus, your you're here. All things are possible now that you're here. Jesus, you're here. Jesus, you're here. And all things are possible now that you're here. Amen. I'd like to greet all of you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus and uh, Brother Milton from Brazil and brother, what was the brother's name? Eglizio. Huh? Eglizio. 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 Okay. Well, God bless you and <coughs> good to have you here. We'd open our Bibles this morning to uh, 2 uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 1. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall any word be established. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Our text for this morning is very simple. But if you have any truth, O oh God, we know that it must be established not only with just one scripture, but it actually has to have two or three. 
you said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let any word be established. And Father, we're thankful, Father, that you <clears throat> came down to this hour with a shout, a message. You chose a vessel, you elected him before the foundations of the world to be here to be a mouthpiece. But before that, he had to die to himself. And before that, he had to hate and despise himself. And so you took those things from him that he loved most dearly. You took his wife, you took his child, because he didn't listen to you. He listened to his mother-in-law. The first sermon he preached, all the women in the church were crying because he was crying. And when he asked his pastor, how'd he do? He said, rotten. And he said, why? He said, because you didn't give any word. It was all emotion. So, Father, we're not here to give emotion. We're here to deliver your word. The word that you gave when you came down and to show it, to establish it, to prove it through your scripture. For in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> This morning, I'd like to take number 20 in our series on the token, and uh, I'm going to entitle it Infused Life. And we're going to pick up at paragraph 74 of Brother Bram's sermon, the token, preached uh, September 1st of 1962, I believe it is, and, uh, or 63, where Brother Bram said, this fine scholar went on talking to me, and I said a while ago, he said, well, Billy, he said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. What more could a man do but believe God? And I said, that is true, doctor. It's right. He did believe God. The Bible said so. You're right. As far as, as, far as you've come, you're correct. As long as the twelve spies that were sent out to go over to spy out the land of Canaan, as long as they went forward towards Canaan, they were gaining ground. But when they came to the borderline... Then they rejected it. Now, what was the borderline? It was the promise of God for that hour. <clears throat> so what's our borderline today? It's the promise of God for this hour. And notice they came up to the borderline, and then they fell away. It's happening today. Why would people wait to the last minute and then reject this message? I, well, to fulfill scripture. I said, well, you Baptists are all right as far as you come. But have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And I said, remember, God recognized Abraham's faith. He believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. That's true. But then God gave him the seal of circumcision as a sign to him. Not that his flesh circumcised had anything to do with his soul. But it was a sign that God had recognized his faith. And he gives us a sign of the Holy Ghost that he has recognized us as believers. For repent, and that means change your thinking, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you. You get the point now? <clears throat> Notice Brother Branham gives us two scriptures here to establish his point, because that is all that is needed to establish any point. As, I, as we read for our text... 2 Corinthians 13 and 1, In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall any word be established. And so the word or point that Brother Branham is making is established via these two scriptures. But let me give you a few more. The point Brother Branham is establishing here is this. He gives us the sign of the Holy Ghost that he has recognized us as believers. <clears throat> now, people say, well, I believe the message. That's all I need. No, it's not. Well, I believe Brother Branham was a teacher sent from God. So what? So what? What does that do for you? If you haven't been sealed by God, it means nothing. You can believe Brother Bram is a prophet sent from God and you still go to hell. You can believe Lee Vell is a teacher sent from God, you'll still go to hell. You better have the Holy Ghost. Now, 
Let's turn in our Bible to 1 John 5 and 1. Whosoever believeth. And you have to be a believer to do what, John? To believe. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that begotten of him. <clears throat> now, I tell you what, you could ask any Baptist if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, they say, yeah, absolutely. Does that make him a believer? Nope. Nope. Ask any Catholic, is Jesus the Christ? Oh, yeah. Does that make him a believer? Nope. Notice now he tells us here that you cannot call Jesus the Christ or Jesus the anointed one because the word Christ means anointer, anointed, or anointing. It all depends on the context of the sentence. And he's telling us that whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, and you cannot believe unless you're a believer, therefore, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And yet, we hear... 60% of Americans claim that Jesus is the Christ. He's the Son of God. Therefore, as Brother Bram explained this from questions and answers, COD, so now the scripture says that no man can say Jesus is the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. So you cannot believe that Jesus is the Christ until you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You're only testifying or saying what the scripture says, saying what the pastor says, saying what mother says or some good preacher says, <clears throat> but you don't <coughs> know it yourself until he has witnessed his resurrection to you. And no man can call Jesus the Christ until or by the Holy Ghost. Now let me say this in another way, and then we'll go back and read what Brother Branham just said, and you will perfectly understand what he is saying here. Notice he says, so you cannot believe that Jesus is the Christ until you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then Brother Bram says, Oh, you can talk it and repeat what others have said to you. But until you've actually experienced that anointing in you, changing your life, you cannot actually say it with a true confirmation. In other words, until you have actually experienced God's anointing upon and in your life, you cannot you are not a witness to the actuality of him being an anointer. <clears throat> he says, but you don't know it yourself until he has witnessed his resurrection in you. Now, we've given sermons on the word uh, ginosko, and it's the word that is translated as the word know in the scriptures. Mary said, how can I be expecting a, a child having known no man. And the word means an experiential knowledge. How can I have, how can I be expecting having not experienced any man? So we're talking about an experiential knowledge or an experiential understanding. It comes through experience. Now, the scripture says that no man can see, say uh, that Jesus is the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. We're still reading from Brother Branham here. So you cannot believe that Jesus is the Christ until you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You're only testifying or saying what the scripture says, saying what your pastor says, saying what your mother says or some good preacher says, but you don't know it yourself until he has witnessed his resurrection to you. <clears throat> no man can call Jesus the Christ until or by the Holy Ghost. Now, to be a witness, you can't be a witness hearing something secondhand or thirdhand. You've got to see it or experience it yourself to be a witness. And that's what Brother Brown said, until he has witnessed his resurrection to you. Until you have experienced his resurrection. So the witness has to be in you. The anointer from the anointed one in you. Or you can say it all you want to say it. But those words are only words and have no meaning to you because you have not ex personally experienced or you have not witnessed the Holy Ghost anointing in you. <clears throat> we have a problem in this message. We have a problem because people believe that uh, they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost by claiming to believe the message. So we could go to every camp in this message and ask them, what is the message to you? And they'll give us a different thing. Give us a different explanation. 
Have they really received the message yet? No, they haven't. Have they really received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? No, they haven't. When I look out amongst the people in this message, I see Baptists, I see Pentecostals, I see Lutherans, I, I see a whole mess of a mixed multitude of people who don't even uh, identify with the Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit because their vessels are unholy, unholy, unholy. And I'm going to tell you something. The rapture's coming up very soon. Resurrection, then rapture. If you're not born again, you're not going to make it. Brother Bram told Billy Paul himself. He said, son, when the Lord comes, if you're on the wrong side of the street, the other side of the street, there's nothing I'll be able to do for you. So don't be looking for Brother Bram to come back and speak you into the bride. Either you receive the message or you're not going to be partaker of the, sh of the voice. Either you receive the shout, which is the message, or you'll not be partaker of the voice. <clears throat> you'll be left behind. Now listen to the language, how perfectly Brother Bram lays this out for us in, in his sermon, Patmos Vision. Now ask God to, now while we're talking on revelations, ask him to give you a revelation of this. <clears throat> now, remember... The word revelation, look it up in Webster's Dictionary. The word revelation means manifestation of divine truth. So you cannot have revelation by an intellectual conception. You've got to have a manifestation of divine truth. In other words, you've got to witness for yourself. Amen? All right. Now, listen up. While we're talking on revelations, ask him to give you a revelation of this. For it can only be known by revelation, and you can only be saved by revelation. You have a knowledge of it intellectually, but you can't be saved until it's revealed to you. No man can call Jesus the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. That's what the Bible says. No man can say Jesus is the Christ until he has received the Holy Ghost. Now you might say, well, the pastor said so, and the Bible says so. Them are true. The church says so. Well, that is true. But you don't know yourself until the Holy Ghost has revealed it to you and he's become in you. No man can call Jesus the Christ only by the Holy Ghost, not by knowledge and not by intellectual. That's why we see so many people falling away. They've got an intellectual conception. They, they bore their minds into the message. They study the message. And because it's intellectual and they haven't had a personal experience from the creator of the heavens and the earth. His spirit living in you. His resurrection raising you up. Changing your life. They say, ah, oh, there's nothing to it. Nothing to it. So Brother Bram is telling us this revelation of Jesus Christ <clears throat> or Jesus being the Christ or being the anointer does not, doesn't come by an intellectual understanding. But it comes via Christ actually entering into you and anointing you with his anointing. When Christ has personally entered you and anointed you with that new life, with that new, uh, with, with that resurrection life. Nobody can take that from you. You've experienced it in your whole being, body, soul, and spirit. Nobody can take that from you. Amen. So Brother Bram is telling us that this revelation of Jesus Christ being the anointer doesn't come by intellectual understanding. It comes via Christ actually entering into you and anointing you with his, this anointing, his anointing. <clears throat> then you can speak from an experiential knowledge and not just repeating what somebody else has told you. And that's the problem. People have sat under, under good teachers and bad teachers and they just repeat what they've heard, good and bad. But there's nothing that's come alive in here. When you have truly witnessed within yourself the anointing of Jesus, you can say that he's an anointer. Otherwise, you're just repeating what somebody else says. In other words, it's 1 John 5 and verse, I think it's verse uh, 11, 21, I know, 20. <clears throat> There's many scriptures in there. He says, he that believeth, uh, or he that hath the Son, hath life. 
He that hath the Son hath life. And the Greek word is, he that echoes the Son echoes life. Now, there's a difference between echoing and just repeating. A parrot can repeat. Now, you brothers would know, because you've got a lot of parrots down in South America. They can talk, they can say, you can teach them to say anything. And you can teach your kids to say anything. They can become just repeaters of the message. You can't teach your children to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But you can point them to it. You can point them to it until they die to themselves. Then when they've died to themselves and Christ has entered in, then they'll know something has taken place. Something's changed them. The Apostle Paul tells us in Romans 8, verse 11, But if the Spirit of Him... Let me just make it a little bit larger for you. If the Spirit of Him, and there is only one, the Spirit, and that is the Spirit of God... So he says, but if the spirit of him, God's spirit, that raised up Jesus from the dead <coughs> dwells in you, and that's a big if, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Notice, the Apostle Paul tells us the same spirit, God's spirit, that raised Jesus from the dead will also quicken or make alive our own mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelling in us. So we're not talking about intellectual understanding here. We're, we are talking about an experiential knowledge. You know it because you have personally witnessed it. From what the Holy Ghost was given for, Brother Brown said, Now the works that I do, now notice he's quoting John 14, 12, The works that I do, God is in his church to continue his works. Notice God is doing it to continue his own works, but he's using his church to do it. That's why he sent the Holy Ghost. Now he knows that. He knew it wouldn't be, it couldn't be done that way, so, so, so was it by otherwise. So, so he had to send, the Father that sent the Son put all that's in the Son in you. And the same works that he did, the, the very same works now that Jesus did, you also will do, the church. Wouldn't you like to do the works of God? Jesus said, if you want to do the works of God, believe on me. How you believe on him? You can't do it till you got the Holy Ghost. Because no man can say he is the Son of God. You're saying what somebody else said. The Bible said that he's the Son of God. I believe the Bible. All right? The Bible says he's the Son of God. The Bible, the, 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 I believe the Bible. The pastor says he's the Son of God. I believe the pastor. Mama says he's the Son of God. I believe Mama. Mama. My friend says he's the son of God. I believe my friend. But the only way that I can say that he's the son of God is when the Holy Ghost comes in and bears record of itself. Comes in where? Comes in you. <clears throat> then I know that he's the son of God. No man can call Jesus Christ only by the Holy Ghost. There you are. From super sense, Brother Brown said, now you cannot, uh, you cannot believe it until you are regenerated. All right, same thing. He's got to come in to regenerate you, right? The Bible says that no man can call Jesus the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. He went through that, uh, we went through that last week. And it's been such a stumbling block because especially to the Pentecostal believing people, when they hear me say that, that Jesus said in St. John 5, 24, He that believeth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. Echoes everlasting life. Eternal life comes from God alone. And no man can say Jesus is the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. You're only taking what somebody else said, what you learn by intellectual, and what you learn by the natural five senses. But when the sixth sense comes in, the Holy Spirit, it takes away all the reasoning of these six senses or five senses and lifts you up into the sixth sense to make you believe things that you can't see, taste, feel, smell, or hear. It does something to you. Then you can say Jesus is the Christ because you have witnessed it. Not what intellectual teaching has taught you, but what you have experienced. Listen, when you see something take place, you've seen it, you were witness to it, and you tell other people, and they say, ah, a bunch of nonsense, don't believe it. You say, brother, I saw it. I'm a witness of it. Ah, forget it, that's impossible, it couldn't happen. It did happen. Because I saw it happen. I heard it happen. You know because you know. Not because of what somebody else tells you. See, that's the problem we have. People don't know. 
they can intellectually repeat what they hear. And we've got a lot of repeaters in this message. But how many people are truly echoing? Because, you know, to echo, the one who gives the shout has got to be there for you to echo. You can't get a second hand. Hallelujah. Let's see. Then you say Jesus is Christ because you have witnessed it, not what intellectual teaching has taught you, but what you have experienced. All right, from questions and answers, Brother Branham said, Now, now I, <clears throat> I know that great scripture. I use it myself. I've got it written here, St. John, the 5th chapter, 24th verse. It's a pet scripture to me. For Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me has eternal life. And that word has is actually the Greek word echo. Echoes eternal life. Let me read it so that I'll get it so perfectly right. St. John 5, and I want you to listen close now as we go into the scripture, the 5th and 24th verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into the condemnation, but is, that's tribulation, Brother Bram said, but is passing from death unto life. He that believeth on me. Now, the scripture says that no man can say that Jesus is the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. So you cannot believe that Jesus is the Christ until you have, been, have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> You're only testifying or saying what the scripture says, saying what the pastor says, saying what mother said or some good preacher says. But you don't know it yourself until he has witnessed his resurrection to you. And no man can call Jesus the Christ until or by the Holy Ghost. Again, from attitude and who is God, Brother Bram said, and I'm happy tonight... To know that the people still believe in the blood, see, the blood of Christ. And I do not believe in, in this social gospel that they have today and these cults that go around saying, well, there's no such a thing as the blood and the Holy Spirit. You're just, you're, you're not a Christian. He says, you're not a Christian when you do that. You can't be. You can't be a Christian without being born again. That's right. You can't be. No matter what you try to profess, but he said, no man can say Jesus is the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. See, if you're just taking what somebody else said, you're going, to, to, you're going by what somebody else said. But you'll never know it until the Holy Ghost has filled you with his presence and witnessed to you that he is the Holy Spirit and he's right. And I know that you believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is born of the Spirit of God. But you are only taken what somebody else said until it's a witness to you. You see, again, from infallible word of God, Brother Brown said, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes, sir, the spiritual divine revelation that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Bible said, no man can say that Jesus is the Christ only by the witness of the Holy Ghost. And if you deny the Holy Ghost exists, if you deny there is no such a thing as a baptism of the Holy Ghost, how can you believe in Jesus Christ? Only by historical standpoint you can believe it. But when you have received this, the, the received Christ, the Holy Spirit into your heart and have been regenerated and born anew, then the Holy Ghost itself bears record. Well, how does he bear record? Well, the things that I do, you'll end up doing yourself. That's your bearing record. And that's the reason people today that can believe in divine healing in the supernatural uh, because the very God that made the word created it has sent his own spirit into their hearts to vindicate that to be the truth. And that's why today we have signs and wonders and powers working among us all over the world. Not just in Branham Tabernacle. Okay, he said all over the world. <laughs> From God's provided way of healing, he said, Now, in you up here, every person here this afternoon, I want to believe, believes in divine healing. Every one of you, you say, well, sure, Brother Branham, I believe in divine healing. Now, maybe you mean that with all the intelligence that you know how to speak it, you believe it. And that's in your head. But remember, there's a subconscious down there that's got to say the same thing. Well, if it's saying the same thing, what's it doing? It's echoing. If it doesn't, you'll never get nowhere. You might read the Bible and say, well, Brother Brown, the Bible says this. That's true. That's exactly right. There, there's what people say today. Well, I believe Jesus Christ uh, is the Son of God and I'm saved. Well, how do you know that he's the Son of God? And I'd like to ask the question, how do you know the pillar of fire has come down in this hour? How do you know the pillar of fire? Oh, you say, well, I got the picture. How do you know the pillar of fire is still here? We have indicated prophets said the pillar of fire is still here. He's going to lead us to the millennium. We haven't got to the millennium yet. How do you know it? How do you know it? How do you know he's the son of God? The Bible says so. See, 
And I say, well, how do you know that he's the Son of God? Well, Mother said so. The preacher said so. Well, they're right. But how do you know? The Bible said that you cannot know it until you have received the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. You're only taking somebody else's word. Did you know that? <clears throat> that, didn't, that didn't go very well, but that's the truth. Quo quote it. No man can say Jesus is the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. That's right. The Holy Ghost in you has to bear record to the resurrection. And Jesus being the Son of God, or you're only taking somebody else's word for it. You're only taking what the Bible says. The Bible's right. Or you're only taking what the minister says. The minister's right. Or what some other good person said. They're right. But, but you, as an individual, doesn't know that Jesus is the Christ until the Holy Ghost has brought it to you. That's right. How do you know that God can heal? Well, you know for certain when you've seen him heal you. Right? And when you have laid hands on someone and you've seen that person get healed, then you know that by the laying on of hands... You have witnessed by the laying on of hands that person was healed, then God still heals by the laying on of hands. If you have witnessed the things that God has done, then you can say with certainty, I know it because I've witnessed it. And notice in all of these quotes, Brother Bram is telling us there must be a witness of his spirit, <clears throat> the resurrected spirit of Jesus Christ alive in you, not an intellectual understanding. Anybody can say that they believe, but the true believer can say he believes because his life has been made anew. He has personally experienced the Spirit of God living his life for him. And until you have died to yourself, God will never place his Holy Spirit in an unholy vessel. From witness, the message witness, Brother Brown said, <clears throat> now he didn't say, I want you to go now and be my witness. He said, you'll... You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then you shall be witnesses. See, you must be. You must have a first-hand experience. Well, that's the prophet of God telling you that. If I go down here to the worst roadhouse or whiskey place that there is in Phoenix tonight, a gambling divisities, I don't know what that means, but and every person in there that would be drinking... I'd walk up to him and I'd say, well, what do, you, what do you think of Jesus Christ? And he'd say, oh, he's the son of God. Well, that doesn't make him saved. Then I'd say, well, how do you know that he's the son of God? Well, my mother said so. Well, maybe mother was right, but what about you? See, if I went out here to a church member and I said, what do you think of Jesus Christ? Who, who was he? <clears throat> Why, he was the son of God. Well, how do you know? Well, my pastor said so. Oh, your pastor's right, but what about you? How do you know about it? See, see, mother's right and pastor's right, but before you know he's the son of God, the Bible said no man can say that he's Jesus the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has to witness it to you, must be a personal experience. I hope you see it. From all things are possible, Brother Ram said, now, well, just a minute. He, eat, he peeled the apple, took a piece, put it in his mouth, Begin to chew on it, swallowed it, and said, I want to ask you a question. If this apple, is this apple sweet or sour? And the infidel said, well, I'm not eating it. I don't know. And he said, well, that's what I thought. And he walked right back down and sat down. How do you know whether there's a Holy Ghost or not until you've received it? God said to the prophet, eat the scroll. It'll be sweet to your taste and bitter to your stomach. How did he know? Because he ate the scroll. How do you know whether there's a Holy Ghost or not? Until you received it. How do you know Jesus heals or not? Until you've received it. He said, well, no man can say Jesus is the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. No matter how much you read out of the Bible, that won't work. The Holy Ghost has got to witness it to you. His resurrection in your life. And you don't know whether it's sweet or sour. That's right. The poet said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Who knows before he tastes it? It's he that tastes that knows. As the old saying is, the proof of the pudding is in the eating thereof. So that's good. So this infidel was defeated in this case. From Jesus arose, Brother Brown said, now one place I'll, I'll, I'll be, Jesus said, I'll be with you to the end of the world. He will be with us, even in us, to the end of the world. 
I, not somebody else, I will be to the end of the world. I is a personal pronoun. And I'll be with you to the end of the world. And many people today doesn't realize that. Only those who have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life and has been born again by the Holy Ghost is a witness of the resurrection. The Bible said no man can say Jesus is the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. You might know it by the word. You might know it by the way of the pastor or, or, or your mother or some testimony. But, but, you, but you don't know it yourself until personally he has witnessed to you that he is raised from the dead and he lives in your heart. What a beautiful picture. And now these disciples were taught that they, they wasn't educated. They might, have knowed, uh, they, might, they might have known all about algebra. They might not have known all about the geographies of the world, but there was one thing they did know. They knew him. So I ask you the question this morning, do you know him? Do you really know him? Have you gotten on your knees and gotten past all the cell phones and all the busy things and gotten to the place where you been in contact with him and you know him in the power of his resurrection you've seen your life change now in this message the token in paragraph 345 brother bram said let me live the example of what christ said a man should be let me be a brother to a brother a brother to a sister let me be a minister to the ministers let me be an example of examples let me show to the world that this word is christ the only way that i can do it is to come into him because I can't do it myself, and you can't do it. But let the word and you become one, and then it lives itself out. You are a walking epistle of Jesus Christ when he's got complete control, control of you to make <coughs> every word. We see this in Philippians 2.13. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Notice you've got to will before you can do. And who does it for you? God does it for you. He not only brings you to the point of willing, but he brings you also to the point of doing. Hebrews 13, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again uh, from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, that God of peace make you perfect. That means equipped and fully mature in every good work to do his will, working in you. Who's doing it? The God of peace. Working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. If you've got the God of glory working in you and willing in you, then all you have to do is just die to yourself and let him do it. From Ephesians 4 and 11, And he gave some to be apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, pastors, and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, the building up of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every winds of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him. Not unto. If Don were standing right here, Brother Don, we're standing right here, I'd be unto Don. He doesn't say we grow up unto Jesus. We grow up into Jesus. We grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. In other words, we are the body. We've got to fit perfectly with the head. From the voice translation, it says, Instead, by truth spoken in love, we are to grow up in every way into him, the anointed one. And that is how you know that he is the Christ, because you have become anointed with his same anointing. You have become him. Brother Brown said, He has become me that I might become him. You have become a reflection of him, and you have been conformed to the image of the firstborn son. Hallelujah. NIV tells us this way. Instead, of speaking, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow up to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head. And that is Christ. The mature body. From the token, Brother Ram said, don't you rely upon speaking in tongues or nothing else. But let the token itself be there. The person of Jesus Christ, his own life in you. Circumcise not just this, that, but circumcise your whole being till you and Christ are one. Christ in you and his life lives out through you. 
As I've said many times here, <clears throat> Jesus died that you can live. And we all know that. Now God, the Father, wants you to die so that his son, the life of his son, can live again in you. From we would see Jesus, Brother Brown said, but now, while he is here working with his church in the form of, of the Spirit, then if his Spirit is with us, he will act just exactly like he acted when he was here on earth. It'll make you act the same way because it's not your Spirit anymore. It's his Spirit in you. Christ's Spirit in you. The things that I do. He that believeth on me, St. John fourteen twelve. the works that I do shall you do also. See, we will do the same works. Think the same thoughts. Live the same type of a life. If the Spirit of God is in you, it will make you live like Christ, Christ's life. Then you become a written epistle read of all men, Christ in you reflecting his light out of you. Well, I know I saw Christ reflecting his life out of William Bradham. That's good enough for me. Is it? It better be reflecting out of you or you're not going in a rapture. Then you become a written epistle, read of all men, Christ in you, reflecting his light out of you as God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself and reflecting God from his own body. No man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten of the Father has declared him. God was in Christ, and what Christ's attitude was, was God's attitude. Because the two work together, the spirit and the flesh united together. Got a sermon on that, the dove and the, and the lamb. <clears throat> Again from his sermon, what shall I do with Jesus? Brother Brown said, as I said, in, if the life of Beethoven was in you, you'd live like Beethoven. If the life of Hitler was in you, you'd live like Hitler. And when the life of Christ is in you, you'll live like Christ. And the works of Christ you will do. If Christ lived today, he'd do exactly what the word he, he said he'd do today. And if the word said that, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why can't this blind ecclesiastical world see the time that they're living in? From Christ is a mystery, he said. So that same word moves from the head as the day comes close, down into the body, down into the body, vindicating that they are one, their husband and wife, their flesh of his flesh, word of his word, life of his life, spirit of his spirit. See, amen. How do you know it? Bears the same record, same fruit, same word. See, manifest Christ, same life, same God, same spirit, same word, same book. Amen. Same signs, the things that I do shall you do also. Oh, hallelujah, my. <clears throat> why and why and why have I been just harping on this same thing? Because I went to Brother Vale and I said, Brother Vale, back in 2011. Brother Vale, do you believe... In John 14, 12, where it says, The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works shall I do. That there's a difference between the works and greater works. He said, yeah, but why do you ask? I said, Brother Vale, because I believe the church is dying. The church is dying because they're saying it's, it was all in Brother Branham. Therefore, we're just trusting that. And they sit around and be, have become useless. Don't apply the token. Don't live the token. And the expression of God is dead to a generation because most people in this message today never saw the prophet, never witnessed him. They only got the tapes. And he said, preach it. If we are not so identical with the life of Christ, we'll never make a bride of Christ. We might make a message, so-called believer. Two million people left with Moses, following the pillar of fire, and only two of the two million. Joshua, which our Joshua is the Holy Spirit, and Caleb, which is a type of the, of the rugged believer. Only two of them. And then the children that were born after Kadesh Barnea. Only two of them entered into the promised land. And Alpha has got to repeat an Omega. Many, many, many. Paul says they were all baptized under the cloud. 
They all followed the rock, which he said was Christ. They all followed the pillar of fire. They all, said, they all followed the prophet. And they all died in the wilderness, but two. And Jesus himself said, they're everyone dead. And William Branham, vindicated prophet of God, said that means they are eternally separated from God. Message believers, so-called. God is not dealing with the denominations, brother, sister. He's dealing with the people right here in this message. I want you to get ready. I want you to put aside anything that would hinder you from being ready when that day comes. Like Brother Brown said to Billy Paul, if you're on the other side of the street when he comes, I can't do nothing for you. Children, Dad and mom can't do anything for you. Wives, your husband ain't going to be able to do it for you. Husbands, your wife ain't going to be able to do it for you. Your pastor ain't going to be able to do it for you. It's got to be a personal walk. A personal getting ready. A personal like Enoch. Every day when you get up, grab a hold of God's hand. And say, Lord, I'm going to hold on to your hand today and I'm not going to let go of it. I want you to be with me in my conference calls. I want you to be with me when I'm on the job and the guys are joking and telling dirty jokes. I want you to lead me out. Lead me away. I want you to reflect in me your presence so that people could be healed by my shadow just like they were by Peter and John. I want you, God, so to reflect in me that when your son comes that we go to meet him in the air, I'm going to be there. When the resurrection takes place, I only have one desire, and that's to be in that great assembly of the gathering of the saints. That's what we should be living for every day. Not coming to church and having a revival and walking away saying, oh, that was a wonderful message, and then we go back to our old habits. You've got to die. Just die to yourself. <clears throat> And trust, listen, trust that your little ones will be there because you'll be there. Because we have a promise in Isaiah, said in all their offspring with them. All their offspring with them. Job's seven kids that were partying, drinking and whatever they're doing, reveling every night. Every night partying. It sounds like this age. And a fire came in and killed them all. Then people came down, stole his cows, his horses, his sheep, his goats, took everything. And, all, and, and then God allowed the devil to give him boils. And he left him with a bickering wife. And she said, why don't you just curse God and die the death? And he said, you speak like a foolish woman. But when he held true through all the trials and all the testings, and believe me, the squeeze is coming. And when it comes, you will be tried. You will be tested. You will have to pray food on your tables. You will have to pray water in your tap. It's coming. Because it's going to hit us before we go. We're not, look, we're not, going to be, we're not going to be unscathed by it. We've got to go through a, a, a squeeze. And the squeeze is only a buildup to the tribulation. So you will be here for pre-tribulation. Because we're now in pre-tribulation revelation. It's actually a sermon titled Brother Vail preached back in the 80s. So what are we doing about it? As it was in the days of Noah, they ate, they drank, they built it, they married, they gave in marriage, they did all these things, and they weren't aware when Noah entered the ark. They only were aware, it says, when, they, when the rain started coming. People would be so busy sowing to this world that they're not sowing to the other. And when times come and times get tough, and maybe, and if you're not prepared, you'll be left behind. It's going to get much, much worse. And you will have to give your life for your testimony or you have no chance on the other side. No chance in the sec second resurrection. But who wants to go that far? 
I want to go in the first resurrection, brother, sister. I'm willing to die to Brian Kasorik because I, I don't like Brian Kasorik. I hate him. And I had to hate him in order to receive God's spirit. And you got to hate yourself. He that loveth his life shall lose it. But he that hateth himself, he that detests his earthly, sensual nature, he that detests it shall save it. He'll save his life because God will give him his life. From Christ's mystery, he says, And Paul, this great intellectual man, never tried to express his great theological terms upon the people. He humbly accepted the word of the Lord, and he lived the word so that it expressed through him. He lived so godly until they seen Jesus Christ in him so much till they wanted his handkerchiefs to take it and lay it upon the sick. There is the life of Christ. When someone comes up to you and says, Sarah, can I borrow your scarf and wear it? Because I see so much Christ in you. And I'm not feeling good. And I'd like to feel good. And I know that that anointing of Christ is in your life. And I want it upon me. No theologian can know this life. They can know about it. But they will never know it by study. It comes by surrendering your own life and dying to your own self. It is not and cannot be received through theological study, nor from educating yourself to it, nor from any mental effort on your part. It comes when God himself injects you with his own life. When your life has died and his life comes in to live itself out in you. Paul said in Romans 9.16, So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. John 1 and 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power, to them gave he exousia, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The word exousia means an ability to make a right decision. No one else is given that ability to make a right decision. Which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. <coughs> Only those that are born of God are given that ability to make a right decision, to believe, to become what they're ordained to become because you always were sons of God from Christ the mystery of God revealed 147 brother Brown said God is known by simplicity and the revelation of Jesus Christ to the most illiterate person see not your theology it's a revelation of Jesus Christ upon this rock I'll build my church no other rock is accepted no other things accepted no other Roman rock no other Protestant rock no other school no other nothing but on exactly the revelation of Jesus Christ through the new birth he, bo he, he borns uh, in there. And he injects, and I always think of a needle, you know. He injects his own life, and your life is gone. And the life of Christ is projecting itself out through you with the preeminence to the people that they see the very life and the works and the signs and the wonders that he did is doing the same things through you. <clears throat> that's John 14 12 outside of that the rest of it's not even called to at all watch God's great revelation unfolding by lack of this revelation is why we have so many different divisions among us and so much mockery what's mockery ever hear of a mockingbird he can sound like a blue jay he can sound like about four or five other birds mockery is an imitation there's so much imitation so much division among us is because the people lack that revelation. See, they lack that revelation. The teachers. I don't know one camp in this message that's teaching this. They all had a special doctrine. A special theology. And the people are so focused on that, they're not focused on Christ. They're not focused on dying. They're not focused on the life of Christ taking over their own life. They're focused on some big thing that they can do. Forget it. From Christ's mystery, God reveals that, and if the life, the life of Jesus Christ ever puts out another body of believers, it'll bear the fruit that the first one did. <coughs> They'll write a book of Acts behind it because it'll be the same, the same life. See? See what I mean? You just can't get away from it. It's the life of Christ in you. It's been injected in you. By the Holy Spirit itself, living itself through you. 
Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I'm alive. I'm living. But it's not me that's living. That's the key. It's not me that's living. But Christ is living in me. And the life I'm now living in this flesh, I'm living by his faith. His revelation that he died first to himself in Gethsemane before he could die on the cross for you and I. Now, I've got to die to myself in my Gethsemane that Christ might live through this body. As Brother Brown said, he said, I sanctify myself that they might be sanctified. How many of you put things aside that you know that might be a stumbling block to others? You just kind of put it aside. You say, I don't want to be a stumbling block. You're sanctifying yourself so that you can sanctify them. You can be a witness to them. From is your life worthy of the gospel? He said, a Christian is to be Christ-like, and a Christian cannot be a Christian until Christ comes into the man, the life of Christ in him. Then it produces the life that was in Christ. It's lived and you do the things that Christ did. Again, just one more time. And then if he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, you touch his garment, and his Holy Spirit will operate through us. If you've got the right channel, the Spirit to believe by, the same channel that's here, it'll operate the same way. It's got to. It's God. You put the life of an apple tree in a peach tree, it won't bear peaches no more. It'll bear apples. And you put the life of Christ in a man that's a mortal being, he'll bear the fruits of the Spirit, he'll bear the fruits of the resurrection. Now listen, you want to have peace and rest knowing you're going to be in the resurrection? Die to yourself now. Let him raise you up. And if you've got the resurrected Christ Jesus living in you, you're going to be there, brother, sister. No doubt about it. From Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 6 from the Amplified Bible. But God so rich, God is so rich, uh, is he, in his mercy... Because of an, and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love in which he has loved us, even when we were dead slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him. You see, that's also Romans 8, 11. For it is by grace his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit together uh, in, with him in heavenly places, or in, in the heavenly sphere, <coughs> by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. From the voice it says, But God, with the unfathomable riches of his love and mercy, focused on us, united us with the anointed one and infused our lifeless souls with life. Infused. Same language Brother Branham used. Even though we were buried under mountains of sin and saved us by his grace, he raised us up with him and seated us in heavenly realms with our beloved Jesus, the anointed. And in closing, from questions and answers, Brother Branham said, and if you abide in me, he's quoting scripture, and if you abide in me and my word in you, see, we become a part of his word, a part of his life. For we are flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone, and life of his life. Then we can no more perish than God himself could perish. That's what the Holy Ghost is. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we see coming. It seems like it's being doubled under her double daily. We see all the curses of Deuteronomy 28 coming on this nation and every nation on earth. Souls being perplexed. People beginning to wander. Now the nations are turning them down. They open their doors to the Muslims. They're turning now down the Christians that are fleeing. Getting ready for the persecution of the Christians because it's coming one day. And they'll be hunted down. People that claim to believe and follow the prophet of God. But they didn't have the Holy Ghost, so they missed the rapture. They'll be hunted down like dogs, as our prophet said. Father, we pray that we will not be among that number. But we'll be among that bride of Jesus Christ who is dressed in your word. Whose thinking is your thinking. Whose life is your life. Whose words are only expressing your thoughts. Whose actions are your actions. Whose works are your works. May we be ready, O oh God. May we be so focused upon thee. 
that when you get ready to leave this earth, will automatically just go with you because we're part of you. Father, give these people, your children, that assurance in their soul by quickening them and making alive the life of Jesus Christ reflecting in their life and knowing with certainty that they'll be in that tent in that resurrection ministry in the rapture because they're so much a part of you and tied to your word that every action every expression in their body is a reflection of Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.